Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's talk about the smartphone market in India. And guys, I'm going to just concentrate on the mid-range smartphone market because at least in India, below 20% is the 90% of the market. And in 2019, we saw a lot of action. I would say this was the best year for the mid-range smartphones. And in the price range of around 15 to 17,000, we are getting some fabulous phones with great overall performance, even the cameras in some of the new uh, new mid-range phones were very good so let's talk about it how it shaped up and what do i feel about 2020 based on what i'm seeing uh, will we see this continuing in 2020 or we'll see something very different and i would say if we broadly break up this market i would say this year the 2019 was a big fight between uh, uh, Xiaomi's uh, Redmi range of smartphones and Realme. The fight was very aggressive. We saw it from the start of this year. Redmi used to launch one phone and just within a month, the Realme used to launch another phone with slightly uh, moved uh, better specs. And again, uh, Redmi uh, again used to contract next month with the new launches. We saw a lot of uh, new smartphones. For example, if you recall the Redmi Note range, they used to just launch one phone, uh, one range of phone a year. But this year we saw the Redmi Note 7, 7 Pro, 8 uh, uh, and even the 8 Pro. So that is all because of the competition in the market. And again, Realme also was crazy in terms of number of phones they launched. I even lost count of it. So it was just going back and forth, back and forth. And it was very funny in comments when people used to say uh, uh, this was a nice phone i used to say they used to say in the comment let's wait for next month let's see what we get in the market and i used to also reply in the comments yes let's see because we also didn't know the amount of phones that were launching so it was good for us as consumers because uh due to that fierce competition between these two companies the pricing was kept at a very low uh, i don't think so both these companies were making huge monies because they were trying to like just undercut each other but now it's changing a little bit and even uh, i was surprised that i saw vivo also in the middle of after mid of 2019 uh, with some uh, great phones at a great price if i recall the vivo z1x uh, if i recall that was at 15000 fabulous cameras at that time one of the best cameras uh, was very good and recently again vivo surprised me with the vivo u20 at 12,000. but again we was like one one product they launched at a very aggressive price but another product they just launched it at a crazy price so they're just flip-flopping i think so and i think so now these manufacturers are realizing the fact that consumers don't have brand loyalty whichever brand is giving them the best pricing because now smartphones have become commodity but because uh, the mid-range processors have become so good now if you look at the modern mid-range processors the snapdragon 712 or even the higher end if you go 730 etc they're so good that uh, you don't really need a flagship the performance is so good the cameras have become so good uh, i would say the 48 megapixel uh, sensor now uh, was there for some time and most of the manufacturers have really done some great image uh, processing on this so we are getting some very good results for example i was testing the upcoming vivo phone it has a 48 megapixel sensor and the images that i got from that one rival some of the higher end flagship smartphones that cost 70 80 000. so again these manufacturers have become very good with that 48 megapixel sensor we have also seen that 64 megapixel sensor so cameras was the weakest point i would say uh, if you uh, look at uh, smartphones in the mid-range uh, from a year or two ago but now in 2019 that's not the case you're getting actually some pretty good camera performance and even the battery uh, capacities have become really good most of these smartphones in mid-range have 4500 5000 milliamp hour battery and they come with at least a 660 675 712 or even a 730 soc which are so good why do you really need a high-end phone unless you just want to like go for a particular brand or whatever or show it off and stuff and some of these uh, smartphones have also started incorporating AMOLED screens in display fingerprint scanner some even came with the gimmick of that pop-up camera for example if I recall the Realme X did that uh, then even the uh, Redmi K20 uh, series did that and uh, again uh, we saw the big shift of again from xiaomi and now also from realme these used to mostly fight in the mid-range market but now uh xiaomi started with this redmi k20 series and the k20 pro they have also released a true flagship yes the price is a lot higher than the twenty thousand price point closer to about 26 27 000. Uh, but even realme did that with the x2 pro and that brings me to the uh, current scenario what we are seeing i always thought that realme would always undercut 
Xiaomi's Redmi devices. But we did not see that with this new Realme X2 Pro. And I've been testing that device. Now the review will come out. So it's a fabulous device. But when the pricing was released, I was surprised that they launched it at 30,000, 29,990. Don't get me wrong. Still, it's a great value. It has the 90 hertz screen, AMOLED screen that nobody's giving in this price point. And that 50 watt charger is just crazy. It makes uh, your normal 18 watt fast charges look slow. It's that fast. Within about 30 minutes, it charges almost fully. Whereas with other charges, uh, with that 25, 30 minutes, you just get a boost up. Uh, so it's a game changer, I would say, in those aspects. But I was expecting that uh, because the Redmi uh, K20 Pro, yes, I know the base variant comes with just six gigabytes of RAM, was priced at 26,000. So I thought Realme would have launched it slightly lower price at around 28 or 29,000, but they launched it at 30,000. And don't get me wrong, it's still, uh, if you look at from price to performance uh, aspect, it is still value for that price point because at that price point, you're not getting that features with any smartphone. But again, as it's that 30,000 price point, psychologically, it's going above that 30,000 price point. Yes, it's 29,990, but it would have been a lot different if they would have launched it at like let's say 28,990, it would have been a game changer. But again, they didn't do that. So looks like now, Realme also is not uh, that uh, bothered about the pricing, being it making it super aggressive. This is a new change that I'm seeing with Realme now. And I think so they had enough of this. So, and, and they're also going to launch this new smartphone sometime in December the, with the Snapdragon 730G. And many of you are expecting that it might be priced below 20,000, uh, 18,000 or something. I was uh, hearing uh, in comments, but I doubt it will be launched before 20,000. Uh, it will be around 20,000, I would say. Uh, so let's see, because I'm seeing this new Realme now. And I think so they had this enough fight with Realme. And now they want to protect their margins because again, these are very big companies. They have employ thousands and thousands of people they have uh, to pay their salaries and stuff and all those things so expenses are there so i think so now realme is not going to be that super hyper aggressive as it was in 2019 so due to that uh, uh, redmi also xiaomi will also be not that aggressive in the pricing because uh, to be very frank i would say this year was great for us as consumers because if you look at the redmi note 8 pro that came with the media uh, g90t soc which is actually way faster than snapdragon 712nx stuff we got it at a very good price of just 15000 and the camera on that was also very good and if the competition was not there like realme we would have never got that device for 15000 so, uh, but I am like a little bit doubtful now uh, that next year, 2020, uh, these vendors uh, for these, uh, what do you say, feature packed mid-range phones won't be that aggressive. And I, I think so right now you can get a great mid-range phone for about 15,000, 16,000. In the next year, in 2020, I think so, they'll be slowly increasing this pricing and they'll try to come near that 20,000. I know it's a sad thing, uh, but this is way the market is going. And they will uh, try to uh, entice you by doing something crazy. For example, Realme is giving that 50 watt uh, charging. Uh, other vendors will give you, uh, what do you say, 5G. Because now Qualcomm has come out with a mid-range chipset that has support 5G. MediaTek has come out with a flagship chip with 5G. I'm pretty sure they'll also come out with a mid-range chip with 5G. So next year we will see something like that in the mid-range uh, 5G capable smartphone, though in India doesn't make any sense because uh, the bidding for 5G hasn't uh, even started yet. It'll uh, happen some time in 2020 and initial test rollouts will come out in 2021. By the time it rolls out majority, uh, it'll be almost end of uh, 2021. So yeah, technically 5G does not make any sense in India, but we'll see a lot of smartphones, even in the mid range, obviously the flagships will have 5G uh, because the Snapdragon 635 supports uh, 5G and most of the flagship phones will use that. Sorry. But even uh, many of the, what do you say, these upper tier mid range phones, that will be around 20,000, will entice you with like 5G capable or give you super fast charging. So these manufacturers are trying to increase that price band from that 15,000 to like slightly higher price point and that we will see in 2020. Anyways, guys, I'll end it. I'm not feeling that well. So what do you guys think about these analysis kind of videos? Do let me know in the comment section below. And if you're not subscribed, <coughs> hit that subscribe button. Uh, catch you later, guys. Take care.